Let's learn to send multi-call transactions on Uniswap with code. That allows running two or more transactions in the same Ethereum transaction. We'll be using Uniswap Swap Router to do our swaps, and we'll be swapping wrapped Ether to USDC and wrapped Ether to Uni in the same transaction. We'll do this with multi-call. You can see multi-call here in Etherscan. And if you look at the contract code, you can see that the swap router contract imports multi-call. So we'll be using the multi-call code and the swap router code in conjunction to make this happen. If it doesn't make sense now, it will as soon as we write some code for it. This is easier and more straightforward than you can imagine. Let's write some code. I have a project here that we're going to be writing our code in, and I have a few files set up already. I have a .emv file with some secret keys in it. I'll explain what those are in a minute. We have our multicult.js file where we'll be writing our code, and I have package.json. I've already installed a few libraries that we're going to need like v3 core, v3 periphery, and specifically you want version 1.4.0. If you use a newer version, it's, it's going to fail. Don't waste your time doing that. I have the v3 SDK, I have .env, and I have ethers.js. The first thing we'll do is import ethers.js for interacting with the blockchain. const ethers equals require ethers and we're going to be we're going to be making requests to the Garali testnet but the code should be almost the same for any network you interact with i have some secret keys like my wallet address and secret stored in the .env file so i'm going to require .env so we can import those So we do require.env.config. And then what we can do is we can say wallet address, one of the keys I have stored in my .env file, equals process.env.wallet address. That's how we get the key out of that file and assign it to a variable in this file. And it just helps me keep this secret uh, and use it without showing it to the whole world. So we're going to import three files from that file. Secondly will be the wallet secret. And lastly will be my infura testnet. We'll just call this test URL. And you need to use your own keys here rather than just writing this. If you do this without putting the keys in the .env file, it's not going to work. You'll need to get these first two from your wallet. And then this last one, you can get by creating an account on Infura, which is free. So I recommend you pause this video and go do that now if you haven't yet. Now we'll need to import some AVIs, application binary interface. And I'm going to copy and paste here and then I will give you them in this video's description. So we'll want the ABI for the swap router, for the periphery payments, and for multi-call. We're also going to need addresses for the contracts we'll be interacting with, and these are specifically addresses for these contracts on Garly. They won't necessarily be the same for Nadenet or another testnet, so we'll have the address for the swap router, for wrapped ether, for USDC, and for the Uniswap token. And that's Uniswap's native token that we're talking about here. Now we have a little bit more setup, and then we'll be into writing our code to actually do the multi-call swaps. So we need to initialize one contract here to run our swaps. And we can do that with, well, we'll give it a name, swap router contract, because it's the swap router that we're initializing. And we can say new ethers dot 
contract and then we will pass in the address and then we will pass in the v3 swap router ABI. This is how you initialize a contract locally using Ethers.js. But we're not done yet. We are going to, I'm going to write a little more code and then I'll explain it. Because as it is, we would not be able to use multi-call. So we are going to, on that ABI specifically, we're going to say dot concat. We're going to say concat. And we're going to concat a couple more ABIs. We're going to concat our periphery payments ABI. And then we're also going to concat the multi-call ABI. And I'm concatting these here because the, the V3 router ABI, and if we look that up in Uniswap, Uniswap uh, V3 periphery artifacts contracts interfaces I swap router I swap router JSON this is like the lightweight ABI so it doesn't have the multi-call function details in it but we grab those from this other API and then we connect those together Let's create our main function where we'll be putting our code. A sync function main. And then let's actually call this main function. So that when we run this script, uh, the code in that runs. Now let's start transaction one. Swapping wrapped ether for USDC. We'll create a JSON object called params, which includes the data we'll need for this first transaction. And this will literally be passed to a field called data when we construct the transaction. So I'll call this const params one equals. And then if we wanna see what key values we need in this object, we can look at the documentation. And I'm going to be using the function exact input single on the swap router contract. So if we go to the docs for the interface of the swap router and we look at exact input single params, we will need these values. So I'll pass those here. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So we'll need a token in, and our token in is going to be the address of wrapped ether. We'll need a token out, and that will be the address of USDC. We'll need a fee. So on Uniswap, there are three potential fee pools for any swap. There's the 500 fee pool, there's the 3,000 fee pool, and there's the 10,000 fee pool. They don't always all exist. I know the 3000 fee pool exists um, for both of these swaps that I wanna make, so I'm just going to use that. So the recipient is, of this swap is going to be my wallet address. The deadline, we are going to write this in a minute. The amount in, I'm going to say ethers utils dot parse ether 0 0.0001 so that is the amount of wrapped ether that we'll be passing to this swap the amount out minimum I'm just going to set to zero and the same with the square root price limit here now this is not necessarily how you should write a transaction or how we guarantee that we get the best price but I just want to show you how to include multiple swaps in a multi-call here today. Now let's write the code for our deadline. So we'll say const deadline equals math dot floor and date dot now. So that gets the current time uh, 
in Unix time, but it's it, so it's in milliseconds, and we want to convert that into seconds, so we divide that by a thousand, and that gives us the time right now. Now, if we want the transactions to expire 10 minutes from now, and we know we're passing in seconds, we can say 60 seconds times 10, and that will set the deadline 10 minutes in the future from now. And if our transactions don't get picked up within 10 minutes from when we send them, then they won't be run at all. The purpose of this is just so you don't have transactions hanging around forever. Now we need to encode the exact input single function along with this data. So I'm going to name this variable and code data one because this is our first transaction. And then we're going to reference this swap router transaction and we'll do dot interface dot encode function data and then we pass in the function that we want to call, which in our case is exact input single, where we specify how much of the input token we're passing into the swap, as opposed to you know, specifying the exact amount we want out. That's another function on this contract. And then in an array, we pass our arguments that we are passing to this function. And in our case, it's this params JSON. And this will be encoded. And that's it for our first transaction. So I'm just going to put these together. Then we're going to copy this and we're going to modify it for our second transaction. So now we'll say, let's close this on the side. Now we'll say params2. And our token out instead of USDC is going to be the Uniswap token address. And otherwise, we'll leave everything the same but we need to update a few more variable names. We'll call this encoded data too. And we're making some progress here. We're actually getting close to finishing up. Like I said, this is easier than you would guess. So we'll create a new variable called calls and we'll say equals create an array and to this array we pass in both of our encoded functions. And then we create another variable, and this encodes the multi-call with both of these calls included. So I'll call this encode multi-call equals, again, we're specifying the swap router dot interface dot encode function data. And this time we pass in multi-call, because that's the function name. There's a function called multi-call. And then in an array, we pass in our arguments. And in this case, it's called calls. Now we're almost done here. Create a new JSON, which is what we'll pass to signer.send transaction. Const, we'll call this TX for transaction args equals and open our JSON. And this needs three key values at minimum, two, from and data. Two is the contract address we're sending this transaction to. In our case, it's the swap router address. From is your own wallet because you're sending it from your wallet. So I'll just grab my wallet address. And data is the encoded multi-call. Then we'll say const tx equals await signer send transaction tx args. And I like to do a little console logging so I can see the values as this runs. And then we'll say const receipt equals await tx.wait and this will wait for the transaction to get processed and added to the blockchain. And I'm going to console.log that.
Now, before we run this, let's check the current token balances in my wallet. I've already added the tokens here that we're going to be swapping. Because we're passing 0 0.0001 wrapped ether to both of the swaps, I expect this amount of wrapped ether in my wallet to decrease to 0 0.0012 wrapped ether, and I expect the amount of USDC and UNI to increase because we're swapping wrapped ether to get some of each of these tokens. And it wouldn't be a tutorial if I didn't make at least one typo. So this should be date.now, not date.new. Additionally, when you pass a value to ethers.utils.parseether, it needs to be a string. And so does this one. Something else I forgot to do is to pass the deadline to both of these params. And hopefully last, we forgot to create our signer. And a signer is Ethers.js representation of a connected wallet so that we can send real transactions on behalf of our wallet and swap tokens. To do this, step one is creating a provider. Const provider equals new ethers dot providers dot json rpc provider and here I pass in my infer a test URL and that connects our provider to the Gearly test net. Next we need to create a wallet so we can do const wallet equals new ethers dot wallet and then we pass in our wallet secret. And lastly, we connect our wallet to the provider. Const signer equals wallet dot connect provider. Now let's give this a run. And we wait for that to go through. And let's look at my wallet here now that I've waited for the transaction to go through. So the amount of wrapped ether decreased, as expected, to 0 0.0012, and the amount of USDC and UNI increased, so it worked. And that's all there is to it. If you found this helpful, give it a like and subscribe. Leave your questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.